Hello and welcome to the 42 Six Nations show. We're joined by Shane Jennings, former Ireland Leinster flanker this week. And in this episode, we're going to look forward to Ireland's clash with Scotland in the final round of the Six Nations. We're going to hone in on support play and running off the ball, which has been really important for Ireland last weekend, certainly, and hopefully against Scotland again. We're going to talk about that back row combination in general. And of course, we'll look at a few of the Scottish strengths ahead of this weekend. Shane, thanks a million for coming in again. Well, thanks for having me. I guess the last time we spoke was just after the France defeat. Um, lots of doom and gloom. You picked out a few areas that, that day, uh, particularly around the attack in the 22, uh, some of the streetwise aspects that Ireland were maybe missing. Um, have you seen those things added to the game in recent weeks to, to be encouraged by? Yeah, I think to be fair, in previous games they were doing them at times, but there was some level of inconsistency. Uh, and obviously with the win, there's always discussion points after every game, but after a win you're going, okay, how did they create these opportunities? And when you break it down, you can see some of the tries that we'll probably discuss that it was just very, good basic rooking and we talked about that day about getting the corner and all these technical words about trying to deepen the rook or lengthen the rook so it's more difficult for the opposition to get around and get set in defence and that's what they did for a lot of the tries. You saw Devon Toner do it for CJ's try, he got the corner now he couldn't hold him for too long but if CJ had picked it up probably when Devon got that corner he would have gone straight in but he still gave enough of a hole and there was enough of separation but CJ did unbelievably well as well a great finish and then we saw with Jamie and we saw with Jack as well where guys were very very effective not just over the ball but at the corner and making indecision for defenders at times so I'd say when they look back at the video obviously there's the tries that everybody's talking about that are very very pleasing but you saw on a number of occasions as well Rory Best throwing was unbelievably accurate like there was at times Devon Toner was double potted in defense so that means there's two Italian pods going up and Devon's in the middle and he's at the top of his jump and the ball is getting there so you know people don't probably give the credit for those things when you peel them back and you go do you know what obviously in previous games Rory had maybe missed that dart or the lift had been off or whatever the movement in the line it wasn't as good so all the small things that you need in set piece allow the opportunity for some of those great tries that we saw. So all in all, really pleasing, I'd say, for them to look back on. Yeah, like coaches and players always talk about fine margins and you often wonder what the hell is he on about? Mm -hmm. But they're probably really good specific examples of that. Does that actually come though, maybe with the fact that there's less pressure on them playing against Italy? Is, is this weekend a better test of how they can do those fine margin things? Yeah, it is going to be a better test, yeah. But I think we, were, we all are hypercritical of them because our expectations are very high. Mm -hmm. But we also try and give a very realistic analysis of the game. So when they lost to France, they didn't play that well, but yet they were still very close. If they had adapted in certain situations, they would have probably done a bit better. So very, very close. From playing not the best against France, they still could have done better. Against England, there was opportunities if they'd score. It may have been different. Probably not, but it may have been. And this game again, like it's disrespectful to say Italy aren't good. We all know that the level maybe have dropped, but you still got to play them and you still got to do your job very, very well. And I think that's what Ireland did. So hopefully they will get confidence from it. I think they were probably somewhat liberated because they don't have that pressure. But I think that's just evidence. You know, let's do this. Let's replicate that. It's a, it's a hard one to get right, but they will take learnings from the defeats. They'll take learnings from this because Scotland are going to be a, a different challenge and uh, everybody's going, this will somewhat give some kind of reward for the season in the Six Nations. Listen, the, the Irish team and the coaching team standards are high. This is, hasn't been a successful Six Nations. So to say that the season will be rectified or it will be some sort of consolation, yeah. it's not. This is a game, if they go out and win, yeah, happy days, they've done well, but all in all, they will want to improve on this season. Yeah, I think success for them is winning the tournament. Yes, exactly. Like, like one of the things that improved, we look back at the Wales game, seven clean line breaks against England, seven clean line breaks. There was obviously a dip against France, no line breaks there, but the conditions played into that. One of the things was maybe actually getting support to that guy who busts the line, like supporting the life of the ball, keeping it alive beyond the defensive line. Um, I think they actually focus on that quite a bit, building into Italy. Certainly the players mentioned it quite, quite often. Joe maybe pushed them to forget about the next phase and actually go support the ball, go and play when, it, when it's alive behind the defensive line. Like in your experience of Joe, is that a huge thing with him, that support play? I guess, how does that manifest in his, in his coaching? Yeah, no, I think you hit the nail on the head. You, you always get triggers during the week when you hear the players drop kind of trigger words or sentences and they kind of say, oh, we haven't heard them say that before and oh, we haven't heard them say that in a few weeks. So there was obviously an emphasis on it. And I think when you see it happening, you go, God, actually, Jesus, you know what, they probably were practicing. So it's very pleasing for them. But from my experience with Joe and what you saw at the weekend, 
it's a template. So that try that we saw Jamie score, that was off a template where they obviously got regained the ball off the 22, but they hit a hit up with Jack uh, McGrath, and then they got into position, and there was options off that set piece. But off every template, Joe wants an individual to do something, to, to you saw with Zebo in an offload, maybe it's get a soft shoulder and get a ball on the inside. So the template is there to work off, but you need individual flair or doing something to then do what you're talking yeah. about. The template is how they actually, what, they, how they set up in response to actually regain that 22 drop, maybe? Very much so, and then they get into shape, they have a situation where if, let's say for instance, Zebo gets to out wide and he doesn't do the offload, they've hit a wide channel and then there's another template where they'll go into some form of default pattern where they'll have a hit up, where they'll have an option out the back. These are all situations that they're going to get themselves into. But off every situation, there is the ability for someone to do something to, like exactly, if there's no defender there, go for it. Go in between that space. You don't have to stick to the template just because of the template. The template is there, but see what's in front of you and then play it. Yeah, that was certainly something that you picked up after the France match as well. Uh, it's, it's, it's improved anyway. Looking at that try that Jamie Heast had finished off, we have the setup here with our little Sabido guys. And it was Zebo. he kind of came out the back after this loop play here, and he got outside Campagnaro to about here. Now, the really interesting thing was he slip his rocking action. He actually took Garcia out of the game, beyond the ruck, probably illegal, and he actually came from the side as well, I think, but we'll ignore that. <laughs> But his response, like when Zebo gets to the edge of, of Campanero, he actually takes off straight up the pitch. Like as a back row, as any player, are you like what are your cues to actually take off on, on that kind of line? Because it looks for all money like where the hell is that guy heading? Because Keith Earls came from this side and got all the way across to the pitch, but he's supposed to Yeah, well, I think if you see if you see what Josh did, Josh followed the ball. So probably as a seven, you're always kind of, your intent is, okay, I need to get to the breakdown, I need to get to the breakdown. But Jamie is so comfortable at this level, with such the experience that he has, that he's very, very smart and he understands, okay, do you know what? And I think that's what stood out as well, was the balance between the back rows. So if Josh is hitting X amount of rooks, it frees up Jamie to get into positions, to get into first receiver, to handle the ball a bit more. CJ's carrying, getting over the line. So between the three of them, there was a very good balance. But this piece of play from Jamie, it was just very, very smart. And I think the thing as well, like everybody goes, oh, he's very smart, but his intention to work is very, very good as well. So like, he just gets up off the ground and goes upfield. And you see when he hits about the halfway line, he actually picks up his pace as well and he's calling for it. So he's communicating, he appreciates where the space is, he's trying to get the ball there. I think Parise bid in on Earls and that gave the opportunity for Fergus to go around. Fergus nearly makes a mess of it with a bad pass, held it well and it was a good finish because it was a tricky enough one to get down so he deserves an awful lot of credit for that because it was really good play. Yeah, he said after the game, and I don't know if this is him just throwing a line to, the, to us media, he said the fear of Joe pointing that out on Monday actually made me run. Like were you ever in that case where for, for, the, for the fan maybe or the less educated media pundit whatever, you, you wouldn't maybe notice if he didn't run that line. But would Joe notice? Would oh, he go, God, yeah, yeah. why didn't you run that line? Yeah, well, he, Joe notices everything. So, for instance, there's all, how many amount of clips that you'll see or angles on that try. He'll zoom out and he goes, okay, what do you think, what's going to happen here? And everybody's looking at the ball, but Joe's probably looking over here to see whose speed to feet he's used a lot. So people do have it in their minds. Um, I know personally I did when I played under Joe because if he calls you out on a Monday morning saying if you would have got into position a bit earlier and you would actually worked a bit harder earlier, you would have allowed an opportunity for yourself or someone else. So all Jamie was doing there, he got up, worked his ass off to get into position to allow himself the opportunity. Who knows, it could have broken up the, over there. They would have had clear as they would have numbers to the rook, but he was giving himself the opportunity to get into position to do what he did. So really, really good. Yeah, is something like that only improved on video work, or do you actually are there training ground drills that you guys would have worked on? Michelle? I think a bit of both. I think when you when it's highlighted in videos, you get, you grow in appreciation. And Jamie has that experience with Joe, as do a lot of the Leinster players before he got into the Irish setup, where they knew what the expectation was on them. So if you're lazy, if you're slow getting on your feet, just like there's an, a massive attention to detail when you're fighting on the ground. I don't think the the players from the other provinces really understood the minute detail on getting your top shoulder over and fighting to get that long arm place that Joe would emphasise in training and in games. Because if you get that ball a bit quicker, it allows defences not to get set, it tightens them, it shortens them, and then if Ireland get set early again, so you're working early to get width, to get into position like Zebo did for that try to work around. So Fergus would have said to Johnny, yeah, this loop is on. He would have said that to Zebo. Zebo knew what was going on to get the ball back off Johnny. So it's all about getting into position early, 
But that requires, again, when you peel it back, to talk, to get into position early, and then you do something with individual flair. You get a guy like Jamie who works his backside off to get into position. So it's a combination of everything. When you review that and when you see the success of it, you go, do you know what, it actually works. So the coach gets credit where you go, do you know what, he actually knows what he's talking about. Funny that. So, yeah. you know, like he, he does know what he's talking about. And that's where people, players and everybody gives him that respect because usually what he says is right. Yeah, really beautiful try. Yeah, yeah. we have the little setup here. This is the Jack McGrath try. And it may seem like a little detail, just kind of rocking past the ball and holding a guy in, but it actually gives McGrath the time to actually thunder at the line and, and then that latch comes in from behind. I think when they got into the 22 before, we, we'd, we had questioned their ability to maybe be a bit creative and it all seemed like one-off runners, one-off runners. They did that but it was a bit more energy about it and a bit more pace about it and they were more accurate at the breakdown which allows the opportunity to get that momentum going forward. Against Scotland or against maybe better defensively set teams, it might not be as easy. But credit to them, I think you saw with Devin Toner and the CJ try, he kind of went, if this was Dev, let's say for instance, he took a guy out, but he nearly went too far, so he immediately let go and he goes, you know what, I'm going to get blown up here. So it was very smart by him not to hold him in. He let him go and then CJ took it on. Whereas Josh on this occasion, let's say this is Josh, we get him little red scrum hat, he comes in at whatever angle, but he just clears the space, but he doesn't take him back down here. He just does enough just to take him off the side of the rook, holds him for a split second, which then gives the opportunity for the next guy to pick it up, Jack. And then a very good latch by Dunnock Ryan, good body position. Leg, legs are under them, so their legs aren't miles away where you can just flop a guy in the defence. So they're in really strong body position to carry the ball, and their contacts were very, very good. And then you saw the likes of Dev, who did the first carry, Jamie Cleans. Dev's working his socks off to get up again, and he was on his shoulder, if needs be, to either hit the rook or another option. So. A lot of credit goes to those guys who were making the, there was a mall, so they're working their backside off in the mall, they get up, they hit up, they're working around the corner, they're working around the corner, because Johnny's going to eventually call it where he wants it, but their job is to do what they did, and they did it very effectively. Yeah, we don't have Josh's red scrum cap on the speedo players, Next week, next week. The, the, the legs under the contact, that's really interesting, because again, it's not something you really notice, judging from the outside, or without a deep review of the game, but maybe beforehand they were getting, what, the upper body too far ahead of themselves? No, or? I don't know if they were, do I think, listen, again, with all respect to Italy, their defence, their hits weren't that good, off that line out. Yeah. They had about eight guys ready to line up Dev. And listen, Dev is big and strong, but if you had that confidence in the defensive line, you would have thought that he'd be hit on the gain line. But Dev went for a hole, got over the gain line, fought hard, got the ball back, and then Parisa, you would have thought, would have made a better effort in the, in the hit on the, on the line. But easy to say that from where we're standing, you would have thought they'd done better. But the reason it was so effective with Jack, Dunnock Ryan came in and just added another 115, 120 odd kilos in a good position where it's very difficult to stop that. So I think, what, again, we're talking about peeling it back. The first job was done well. Dev carried well, got over the gain line. That allows the ball to get back a bit quicker. The guys were accurate in the clean out. The next phase that the guys were offering fought in good position again. And when we say getting their kind of feet on them, they're in a good, strong position. If you take the ball and you're, uh, and you're not balanced, it's easy for one of the defensive lads to just throw you down the ground and maybe okay. get on the ball. Or if they're a bit high, they can get under them and get the choke tackle or just actually drill them. They're in good position, so their contacts were very, very solid. And I think that's what you saw. So again, it's really, really pleasing for them to look back. Obviously, they all high after the game going, do you know what, we scored these many tries. But the really impressive stuff is when you look at the video, our set pieces were good, our carries were good, our clears were good. And that allows for all the other stuff to happen. Yeah, the latching thing or, or leeching, as some refer to, is, is something I'm interested in because it happened again on a, on a few of the tries. I think van der Fleer actually latched onto Heesip for his try, second try under the post. Like, the technical detail there, is it just a case of smashing onto the ball carrier's body or are you looking for a specific area to... No, to I think circumstances on? will dictate. You saw uh, Falatau's try against England where Danny Kerr came in and uh, to Purik and it maybe went to take him out but he had latched on early whereas Kerr should have probably obviously gone for the ball carrier. That was a different situation. You saw Jamie under the post where the, and Dunnock Ryan here where there was an occasion where at times you just need to get on the fella's back or shoulder or whatever and just try and give him that momentum to get him over. Other times there might be a defender that's coming in from the outside. So let's say this is the ball carrier here and this is the tackler. This is the guy who's going to latch. If he's here and he's coming to the side, the idea would be trying to get that space in between them. So you're separating the defenders and you can take him away or you can just get the two on one. So circumstances do dictate but the whole emphasis is the ball carrier to be in a good position 
fighting hard with his feet and then the next guy to actually just add a bit more weight behind it yeah. and they did it very very well yeah another example of those those fine margin things admittedly against a, a poor defense like you've kind of touched on the on the back row balance or, or that combination i wonder if joe schmidt had that back row in his mind coming into the six nations but it does seem to have worked out into a really complementary unit like they all seem to have very specific duties. How, how do you find the, the balance in that trail? Yeah, well, they've all got good skill sets, don't they? I think CJ, who is inexperienced at international level, but I think what I fully don't probably appreciate is he's, he's a leader down in Munster, you know, he, he would be quite vocal. So he's got experience that he can add to that group. And, you know, I'm sure he's not going in saying, this is the way we do it here, but he's a smart guy, he'll know what to say. And I think the most important thing is he has to do what he's good at. So if he's good at carrying, if he's good at getting over the line, he needs to do that. And people will be impressed and people will gain confidence from that in and around him. Jamie is there, he's doing his good job as usual. And then Josh has come in as well. So I think the reason why the back row is going well, you have to give credit to the second rows as well. Because like you see with England, with their two second rows, you, you've never seen Rob Shaw probably be as free or the ability to kind of stay out as many rooks as you can because you've got two second rows working so hard to do probably what he was doing before. And I think that's what you had at the weekend. Dunnock Ryan has got a bit of confidence back, got a bit of fitness back after a long spell out, and he's really improved. You know, that game at the weekend, he was exceptional. So when you have second rows and you have a set piece that's dominant, it allows the back row to be a bit freer. And then you can see they get excited about it, their smiles on their faces because they're handling a ball a bit more and against a defence and a team that was beaten well before the end, they did real damage, you know? So it's going to be a huge test for them this weekend. It's a different back row that they're going to be up against who are very, very destructive at the breakdown, really confrontational and good at what they do. So it's going to be a real test for them. So it's going to be a good, uh, going to be a good weekend for it. Yeah, that's a nice Scottish trio there. They have ball handling skills as well. Like John Barkley, we see him offload for a couple of their tries and they're really mobile, so should make for a nice open game. Like Josh Van Der he hit a lot of rucks last day. I think he had over 35 ruck contributions throughout the game and probably let Jamie do different things. Jamie's always the first one that supporters maybe go to when they think Ireland's back row can change. He's probably not the most popular guy outside of the playing squad or there's a perception about him as a personality, but is he a guy that you always want in your team? Or is he genuinely maybe under threat for CJ Moon? I, I, I think having played with him, you have an unbelievable amount of confidence in what he can do. And I think Joe has that. Joe has a good relationship with him over a number of years with Leinster and obviously in Ireland now. But I don't think Joe feels anybody's entitled to it. You have to deserve your place. And he feels that he deserves his place regularly. Uh, as does CJ, as does Josh, because probably people are going, oh, Josh is going to get a chance. And then maybe Chris might come back in or whoever might come back in. If you play well, and you deserve your spot. Joe believes, yeah, you deserve it and you can take it on. So um, I think they've taken their opportunity, you know, because in fairness, they were getting a fair bit of grief, not just Jamie, but other players in and around the squad when the results weren't going their way. But again, the realistic view of it was they probably weren't playing all that bad. It was just because the results didn't go their way that everybody goes, oh, he's rubbish, he's this, that, and the other, which is not the case, and it's not fair. Whereas when they're good and they score tries, hold on a sec, they're not brilliant, they're not world beaters, they're good players, they're consistent. So let's not blow it out of proportion either side of it, if you know what I mean. When it goes bad, we'll back them. And when they're good, let's do it again. So, And I think that's what experience Jamie has with the youth that's there is a benefit that Joe sees as well. That, you know what, I've got an experienced head here. I've got two younger guys. The different skill set, it's a good balance and it's working. A different proposition with this Scottish team, I think, than they have faced in the last couple of years. Joe's two from two against his old mate, Vern Cotter. Um, but the players there with Scotland now seem to be on a, on a new level. They seem to be better players. Probably Gregor Townsend at Glasgow and Alan, Alan Solomons in Edinburgh doing really good work. And they've scored some amazing tries. I mean, Duncan Taylor's kind of individual effort against the French last weekend is amazing. The quick tap after a turnover. But um, I thought it highlighted the influence of Stuart Hogg or the work rate he's bringing out at the moment. There was a tackle here made by Stuart Hogg on Mermoz. Um, and Duncan Taylor picked up the ball, bursts away uh, on the kind of counter-attack. But Hogg actually jumps up off the ground. He hurdles one of his own players and he gets up in support and actually gets a nudge on one of the French defenders coming back. Um, it just highlighted maybe... Yeah, he's a brilliant stepper, he's, a br he's got brilliant hands. We sort of flick on pass for Tim Visser, but he's also working more intelligently and working harder. Is that what Vern Cotter has brought to this setup? I don't know, to be honest. Uh, I think that piece of play highlighted is, that's what 
earns you an awful lot of respect amongst your peers. So you can do all the flash stuff, but if you don't see someone working hard, whether it's an attack to support a guy or working hard in defense, certainly in his position, if he had to cover a cross and work with his back three, like that stuff, when you look back at the video, you can be very proud of yourself and you go, do you know what? Not many people pick that up, but my teammates know that I'm working, working my socks off. My coach knows that I'm doing it. And he probably put a bit of the indecision in that defender that allowed that try to happen. So that's really, really impressive. And that's like an intangible, skill nearly where it, that's just work right and that's appetite so it's very hard to to combat that you know and he's got the skill set that if you uh, allow him space he, he can be very very dangerous from my experience playing against teams that Vern Cotter has coached with Claremont over the years they're confrontational they're hard-nosed like he is by all accounts a real man's man uh, and he doesn't take much messing, to be, from what I hear. So um, they haven't been far off. We all know what happened in the World Cup against Australia. So if they had got that win, this game would be a very, very different situation. So, you know, they've been very, very close. We talked about Ireland against Wales and against France, that there were fine margins. They've had a few games where it's been very fine margins. Uh, they've got some confidence in their game and they are dangerous. But I think any team, but especially Scotland, if we set out our stall in terms of defensive strategies and getting off the line, putting them under pressure, not allowing them time and space on the ball, nobody's good. It's very, very difficult to play when you've got someone in your face and someone who's going to be there all day. So it has to be an 80 minute, relentless, disciplined effort to stop these guys because they will try things and they're very good and they can keep the ball alive and they can get quick ball at the ruck because their back row is good. But I think if we just have an emphasis on focusing on not allowing them any time, not allowing them any opportunity to get into the game, we're going to be all right. Because I do think our scrum is very solid. I do think our line-out is good. And I think our back row is good enough to match their back row. Now, their back row is very good, very, very good. But I do think in the past, when our back row has beaten them up, we, we always come out the right side of it. So I think that's probably two key areas that if we do well on at the weekend, we'll get the result. Yeah, the Scottish comes certainly hasn't improved since Nell came in there. He's been, he's been a good addition. Like, it's interesting that you mentioned Cotter and what you know of him. The perception maybe on the outside is that Joe Schmidt is going to give his players this incredible insight to what Vern Cotter is going to do on the pitch. In your experience, was that the case? Maybe when you were playing Clermont, Joe saying, look, here's a move, though I know this one well, watch out for this, those yeah. little details. Yeah, no, they do. They know each other very well, but I think, <laughs> It's probably a bit different. Joe hasn't coached in Scotland, doesn't know these players as well as he would have known the Claremont players. He knew what breakfast here will have the Claremont players were telling us about in the lead up to the game. and uh, He knew everything about them. And it's very important. If you're armed going in and you have an appreciation of what these players do and what their skill set are, you feel quite confident in a defensive situation. So they all, like Mervyn Murphy and these kind of guys, on the video analysis size will have these guys prepped in terms of what each individual does and there'll be triggers when Scotland get into a certain part of the pitch they'll have certain setups that they'll go to when they get into the 22 off a set off a penalty they'll have certain lineup moves where there's going to be triggers where you're going to be where you're going to be ready because that's the prep they do Joe does know Vern inside out but Vern knows Joe inside out as well you know they've been working together for many years so it just adds to it a bit but the game moves on pretty quickly, you know. Um, new resources in terms of players from both sides. So uh, I don't think their philosophies or their strategies change too much. Joe is Joe and Vern is Vern, I, I presume, you know. So they know what way he's going to try and implement his players in the game. And uh, yeah, it's just going to be good. Interesting matchup, right? Like, do you think that the unstructured strength of Scotland is something that you actually look to negate in your own approach? Or do you. Do you just say, look, they're good in those situations, we'll react when that happens? Or do you actually go and say, let's make sure there's no unstructured situation like that, let's not take a risk with that pass? Or like no, that. I would hope Ireland will do what they did at the weekend, enjoy the occasion in terms of giving it a lash and actually going for that pass because we, we see it works, you know what I mean? I think the thing that we're probably getting away from, it, just because you do an offload or just because you might give that pass there before they might have not given the pass, is that they're they were doing the basics well, they were, they were fighting on the ground, there wasn't that many loose drops, there wasn't feet coming in, kicking the ball out of it. And again, we can go back to the team they were playing against, but the emphasis was that I'm, if I'm going to do something, I'm looking after the ball. And if I look after the ball, that would allow us to retain the ball. Like, I was pretty upset, not upset, but I was pretty pissed off looking at the first play we do a box kick. Andrew Trimble regains it, brilliant play, and then we kick it again. I was like, don't, why are you kicking it? You know what I mean? So I think throughout the game, they held on to the ball. Like, it's, you're working hard enough to get it, so let's keep it, let's retain it, and let's create opportunities. You, they won't be loose because 
like this perception, oh my God, if I go for an awful lot, that's loose, that's a gamble. It's not, it's, it's, you saw, it can work. And if you do the basics well in terms of get the right numbers to the breakdown, you're going to target the uh, Scotland back row. You'll have to add every breakdown to make sure that you're going to get the ball. And then you get into the different shapes that you want to, like we said, getting into the template that will allow us into position. But I think there is a case of, let's get into position. If we get a penalty, our mole is good, our line is good. But um, you can't be loose with Scotland. Everybody knows that. If you are loose on the ground, if you uh, don't work early enough to get into position, like we talked about, these guys are too good and they're too quick and they'll score tries. So it's a real test for Ireland. Yeah. Your, your point about kicking away those turnover situations is, is really valid. I think Ireland probably in that mindset a little bit too much. Certainly something for him to work on. I guess to finish up, like obviously Ireland want that third place in the Six Nations. It's really important financially in terms of actually getting supporters back in next year. But in terms of what's coming ahead with the June tour and also an amazingly tough November Test Series, is it really important that they bring that momentum from Italy through this match and get that confidence right up there? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think they have an opportunity to do that. You know, they've had a, they've been under pressure for, for, for right or wrong. The public have given them a fair bit of grief because the results haven't gone their way. But it was brilliant at the weekend. The supporters really enjoyed it and, and the players looked like they enjoyed it. So I think they have an opportunity to end in a high here. And like you said, they'll, be, they'll break up for whatever amount of weeks till the domestic season finishes. And then it's nice going back into a camp when you've finished on a high and players will be energetic going on that tour. And you'd hopefully see a new, fresh, impetus of like talent like the likes of uh, our second row and all these guys coming over from Connacht and from various places if they get an opportunity to go on tour that's going to add to it as well but if they lose the game and they're kind of going oh do you know we have to review the Six Nations where we weren't as happy with what we've probably that's tough so you know hopefully they'll go right absolutely well thanks many for joining us Shane really enjoyed your insight thanks everyone for watching at home and don't forget to subscribe on YouTube we'll be back next week looking back on the Scotland game and the Six Nations campaign overall cheers